ban. Radiant Team Ban. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to more Nanyang Championships. We are in the NA Qualifier, and we made it through our first series. We saw Digital Chaos, Take Down Root Gaming, uh, and then went all three games. But now we got another Ten sweet treat here, Merlini, who is going to be joining me. Sector 5, going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Void back. Boys. Should be good. It is worthy to note, though, and I was... You know, boasting about it before we went to our break, there will be no Pat Soul, unfortunately. Or Omega Poner. It's very sad because they're both really good, I mm -hmm. think. Omega Poner plays a stellar offlane, though I think he might have had to switch positions now that they brought in the King, Snake King now. Uh, but Pat Soul, who's been their tried number one for quite a while, looks like they're going to have to wait a bit longer. We know that he like went off, went to school, uh, you know, did the thing overseas, and then he might make a return to Dota either there or come back after, but... I guess with the majors and the team registration, I don't know, all of a sudden he's like, I'm ready to play some more. So we'll have to see what they're going to be able to bring here. Uh, just based on rosters and early impressions, Merlini, let's get your expert analysis. Who's taking this series? Who's going to be able to come out on top? What do you think, man? Hmm, you know, not today. If, if I saw them play like last year and I didn't see them play in 2015, I, I would have thought they're really good. But 2015 was like probably the most disappointing oh, year man. if you're not today fan. They've been together for a really long time, at least some of their core players. And it, I, I don't know what happened in this year. I had them like somewhat at least doing something in the qualifiers and they just didn't even get any, get far at all. I had but, a lot of faith in them too yeah. for the qualifier because you got to remember they actually boot camped in the States. Mm -hmm. in this house <laughs> and for they, the qualifier so there's no ping issues whatsoever they're in the room together there's no like oh we're playing from here and there and there they were all together ready to go you couldn't ask for a better setup and not only that they like almost beat eg to be the qualifier team to the summit yes you're like right. they were doing really really well and then it's just like i don't know yeah just utter disaster for their team so i will still go with them though especially with void boys having two stand-ins well they're back and reincarnated that yes technically they're not not today anymore so we don't have to make that joke again ever wait who's strange who's strange yeah strange and oh sector uh, v strange well let me use my deduction power here is mystico there nope that's mystico unless he's gone now well mystico is usually the drafter so so the roster that they gave us was Smash, Masoku, Van. This isn't what they gave us. I think this is what they registered with on, like, the major site. I mean, technically, they don't have to follow those guidelines for this Nanyang Championship, but okay. this is the team I'm fairly confident they actually registered with. Yeah, Mystico, Masoku, Smash, Stinger, and Van, which it looks like pretty much all of them are present with the exception of Mystico. He might have said to step out today. We're not too sure, but... Or it could be strange. I don't know. The players these days, they, they change their names like Underwear Merlini. I can't keep up with all of it. So okay, I just so this say the name I see. draft, it's pretty similar to what we saw in the last series. However, Naga Siren has been picked up by Sector V. Is it Sector V or Sector 5? I or heard someone else say Sector 5, and I've been going with it ever since. But it's Sector V, and then there's a dot. So I think the V is short for something. I don't know what it's short for. Sector Van. I don't know. I think I have Masoka on my friends list. Maybe I can ask him. All right. Well, I I'll let you investigate the oh, origins of where... Because I don't think it's a sponsorship either, right? I think it's just like uh, we're a bunch of ragtag individuals here. We love to play Dota. We're Southern American, and we're going to go ahead and show you what we're made of. But uh, it's not going to be easy against Void Boys. They have Snake King, and normally I'd be like, okay, they're bringing in Snake King. This guy's got a lot of strong experience. He's been around the block. you got to remember, you know, Dignitas, you Team Dog, Narvi, you know, the, the Navi North America. He's been to multiple TIs. And yeah. here we find him on Void Boys. He's a veteran, and he is actually pretty good. It just seems like from what I've heard about him in terms of team environment and chemistry, he is not the best teammate in terms of non dota related stuff so i don't i don't actually know what like what his uh the mystique is surrounding him but he's pretty good i've encountered him a, a few times and crafty he's, veteran I, I like to say yeah he is yeah. he might have a bad attitude but he's still a good player i wonder if he is going to be playing the offlane position i believe that's what he was playing last time he was in the limelight uh for navi US. i think he can play everything the, actually the role i see him in the least i think is carry but there's so many carry players that yeah. it's not that big of a deal if you don't play carry. I, I'm pretty sure he can. He just doesn't. Yeah. So 
Going back to the draft, Let's clock, it. clockwork. It should have been countered by a Rubik. I feel like in the series, but I, I don't know if they didn't have a Rubik player or maybe they just didn't expect Digital Chaos to pick it up every time. But Rubik is a great solution for an early clockwork pickup, oh, yeah. and it was overlooked far too often. I think in the last draft, and Void Boys wisen up a little bit, and like now you have a good counter for him. You can actually kill him. Mm hmm. And they get the Naga on the side of. Uh Sector V slash five or whatever. I wonder if this is just going to be a, a taste of the the new meta and it your might, support Naga that we saw shine through. A lot of the European teams pulled it out. Then we see Aoi. Really you might see like it. a Naga plus like Undying or something that is like obnoxious to play against. It is like Tombstone plus Naga Siren Sleep is just yeah. seriously ridiculous. They're one of those duos. It's so good together, but then also it could be terrible apart. Naga is typically very nice yeah, against exactly. Undying. You got the song to help take down something like a Tombstone, yeah. but you put them together and it's like, oh yeah. Well, Naga's Naga just seconds, top right? tier, like num like top tier support pick yeah. in almost any situation. I think so. Yeah. Gotta know what you're doing though. One bad song, yeah, <laughs> you ruin you, everything. You got. You don't be, know how to. You, if you don't know how to manipulate your illusions to the best of their ability, you're not like pulling creep waves, back cutting waves, making multiple stacks. Then you don't really get to you know enjoy her. She's a hero that just has such a high ceiling, you know. If you can take advantage of most of it, then you're good. Yes, and it's on a really long cooldown, so you can get punished pretty heavily for it. Um, so Stormseer picked up one of Smash's better heroes. Uh, I, we haven't seen a Quap yet today. I don't even think she's been banned. Um, but again, she does not match up well versus Lina, so I can understand why they haven't went to her. But it is pretty good, and with the Naga Siren to back him up, it's especially nice when there's a Lina with Yules always trying to hunt him down. Mm. Big team fight though. It's Dark early. It's a, it's a, yeah, Dark, Dark Seer, the back end of TI was a, it's a topic for a lot of teams. They just love that team fight, of course. I always try to think of it as like also his laning stage setup typically does really well when you put him against those like melee core kind of matches up that really have to deal with the ion shell. It's also a really good versus, I, I think, like an initiator like Clockwork who, like, you know, you hookshot someone and then their team tries to follow up. Like, it's just like really good vacuum play potential there. But at the same time, a good Naga Siren will counter, like, most of what Darkseer has to offer them. And at this point, they don't really have a good hero to deal with the Darkseer, um, Darkseer Ion Show. Like, generally, you want a safe lane farmer that can deal with that pretty well. Stormseer is actually pretty good, but I suspect he's going to be in the mid lane. And Naga is melee, so she can't really handle the Darkseer. So you want, like, a Anti-Mage is a very common pickup, but he's been banned out. Bloodseeker is pretty common versus the Darkseer safe lane. Gyro Cover is also very common. I want to go back for, like, a Luna again. Luna's okay, but she has pretty short range, and she doesn't do enough to the creeps early and she can't tank creeps at a tower like a really really good dark seer will be able to creep skip and without the having the melee capability and no stout shield you can't tank it and you don't have any sustain like bloodseeker has a sustain yeah. anti mage has a mitigation and the melee factor uh luna has the damage but no sustain and no melee factor well, this is a wonderful trifecta coming out for sector five that i've seen many a time now the clockwork the storm and the aa that is just a hit okay. and run he through. says sector v who said that masoku Sector V it so is. I or is it to them Sector B? You gotta remember. Isn't it pronounced B? I don't know. It's Spanish. The V is pronounced B, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It, it's like a soft... Or the B it's is like also a soft V. B. Yeah. Sector like, B. V. I'll just call it V. Sector, sector B. He's, he told me Sector V. I'll just say it with my... If you really wanted me to call it Sector v. B, he could have just texted yeah, 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 yeah. me Sector All B. Alright, fair enough. I will not call him Sector 5. Alright, we're done with Sector 5. The dot Whoever off. said that, then I'm gonna call them out. I'm just going, I had to do the research, you know, I was like, okay, I want to make sure I know a little bit about these teams, and they have played before, and that's just what I heard. But Sector, anyways, what was going on about <laughs> Sector V, you get this hit and run group set up right now, you know, they get spotted out, hook shot, leads in clockwork, easy AA ice blast, Storm Spirit is able to easily jump in there, just huge mobility coming up between both the clock and the Storm Spirit, and AA is just kind of, you know, seriously the icing on the cake to help seal it out with an ice blast. So huge global mobility presence for them already, just between those three alone. The quap band out is very strange because if you're Void Boys, you're slightly concerned about your late game right now. Your team fight's really good. Uh, you have pretty good anti BKB and you have pretty good lanes, but you're really liking late game. Yeah. So, like a Queen of Pain would have, it, it, it's good. It can lane versus Clockwork, but it, it just means your late game's really really weak. So that means that Sector V is, I don't know, they're they're not concerned about the late game apparently, but which is pretty strange because they don't have last pick. So, a lot of the popular carries have been banned. AM, PL, Gyro, 
Uh, again, Jug, maybe? It's like one of those other carries you can pull okay. out one Jug's okay. Top. Jug's well, hasn't been very popular versus Lima at all, though, just because of the, the nuke. Um, I don't think but I, I still think that's for the good. Void Boys. Maybe they need to oh, pick for it up for late yeah. game, yeah. But what about for Sector V, though? For Sector V, though, for their late game potential here. Hmm. Maybe someone to add a bit more of that <laughs> life ability. <laughs> life steal. Don't do that. I mean, they have Storm Spirit and a Clockwork. Ember Spirit. How could you? How could we forget? Good old Ember Spirit. Well, we didn't know whether Storm Spirit is going safe lane versus Dark Hero or not. Ember Spirit is. Well, this is a Smash Hero, and yeah, Storm is not. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it makes Smash sense is now. I'm pretty sure Storm Spirit is going to go safely because it's a much better versus Dark Hero. Yeah, and of course we got to factor in with the, the new stand-in slash who Strange is and what he plays and what their hero pool is. Of course, things might just kind of change on the fly. So it's going to be the Spirit Brothers here uh, between Sector 5. I forgot Ember Spirit was really good against Lina because Lina can't catch you in a combo. Uh, it's almost impossible unless you have a Hex or an Orchid. can go both ways, though. I'm going to make the uh, argument that Lina, who typically does get a Yules, is very nice against a Flame Guard on oh, Ember Spirit. But like he can just slide a fist dodge the stun. All, like all the time, and should fly to, slide a fish slash. Or even like, if he yeah. doesn't, he can just ult. So yeah. like a well played Ember Spirit will almost never get caught out by Lena, which is just a, a big hassle because one of the strengths about Lena is she can pick anyone off anywhere. Yeah. At least on Sector V's lineup, but everyone except for the Ember Spirit in this particular case. It would have been nice if Void Boys had a bit more on like the Silence Department to kind of be able to contain Carry Silencer. Ember Ember Spit. Oh, Dragon Knight. Bit siege heavy. Here, look. Wait, what is? But, uh, what's their safe lane then? What's Shanks, their Rubik support duo safe lane. Solo. Are they going to put Darkseer maybe as a solo safe to match up against the Clockwork and oh. throw an aggro in there? I guess it might be like EG style safe lane Mina. That's that's not that unusual, but it's it's really unusual because they have really crap late game and Sector V's. Uh, their their cores they they're good early like Storm Spirit and Ember Spirit can fight really really well early. G generally, when you pick a Dragon Knight, you know that the opponent has something weak like a Spectre who can't deal with a push. But these two heroes are actually really good at dealing with that. So I, I like uh, Sector V's lineup a lot more. I would certainly have to agree with that, especially when the mid game rolls around. As long as they get what they want between the Clock Storm and even an A to add on top, it shouldn't be too much trouble. And if you know. If it gets a bit crazy, they always have the Naga there for the yeah. sleep to kind of just disperse, recoup, and uh, it, it could lead to a wasted Darkseer wall at that point. The AA pickup was really smart, though, because, like, you, you can't, you you really can't push into that, like, as as um, as Void Boys. Like, you're going to get harassed with Sleight of Fist and yeah. Searing Chains, and, like, a, if anyone gets kind of low, they'll just Storm Zip after Snaking the A. Snaking is pumped up and ready to go. Look at that Darkseer pose. Let's do it! <laughs> That's what I'm seeing right there. <laughs> but with these new rosters does come new play styles, so it does, you know... So Snaking is offlaner? Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to stick with the offlane here. Our, uh, one of our new guests here, which... Uh, Get Tovas? Get Tovas too? Wait, what would you say? I'm, I'm Get Get Tovas. Get Tovas. Get Tovas. Get Tovas. Come, could be. Come G Stu. He's uh, sporting the the amazing uh, Dragon Knight set. We had to lead him with a pause, apparently, like you do at times. I mean, we were spoiled by Ti and all of its non hiccups along the way, and now we get to BS our way through pauses as it goes. Shanks is actually on the Void Boys uh, substitution list right now, uh, registered. So I, I guess it's not surprising to see him step in playing that support role, um, and then whatever seems to be one of their newer faces as well to fill the void of where Omega Poner has stepped out. So this is definitely not the original registered Void Boys lineup, but they're going to have to make do with this, and they better hope that they can hold strong because, got to remember, it's a single elimination. You lose this series, you don't have another chance of making it to the Nanyang Championship. $200,000, may I remind you, up for grabs, and that is before the you know, crowdfunded percentage added or whatever. So, a lot of money on the line. Should be a good time. And here we go. We Whoa. Need smoke. It's Whoa. time. Whoa. These guys don't kid around, man. Their first blood is not good either. I guess maybe they have, like, net into... Uh, net into uh, cold feet. Or... Right? No. What? What do you mean, no? That's locked Dude, down in no, a free No, you cold get the feet. damage from Chilling Touch. Oh, I mean, yeah, Five yeah. heroes with Chilling Touch is ridiculous. And they have Searing yeah, Chains for yeah, lockdown. Yeah, that is... Cold that feet is, is crap. Cold feet is, like... I, I sometimes just don't even skill it and just get stats instead. It's that bad. 
Well, I mean, there is some synergy, Merlini. A cog oh, yeah, wall block, synergy. the net could help a land cold feet, but you're right. You're absolutely right. You're talking about 50 bonus damage for every hit. It's three hits per person, and, and one, two, three, math later is a ton of damage wow. they can dish Void out. Boys didn't even contest bottom rune at all. That's, that's pretty surprising. Usually you'll see one hero contest bottom, and then everyone else goes top. Or, you know, it, it's usually a 1-4 split or a 2-3 split. N almost never a 5-0, but both teams are actually doing a 5-0 split. Void Boys are just frantically pinging. Can you guys take it easy down here? I mean, they anticipate that some trouble's coming that way. They see that there's no one across the river, so they just assume that they probably move through the bottom lane, Wait, which what's they did. Void Boys invaded and, like? and, pla and planted a couple of wards here. Look how deep this ward they put. Even one behind the mid lane tower, even. I guess they want to see Shaker's rotation. Because At maybe a courier snipe? I don't think anyone can even do it. No. Mm. So it's just to see if maybe yeah. Shaker's waiting behind or not. Okay, so interesting start. So no smoke, not gonna come out of it, no first blood. Each team will trade their rune and we will get our lane set up here. Smash is gonna be playing your Ember. Get some help here from Mr. Kudai Fangay. He's gonna be playing your Naga Siren to help block him out. Masoku's pull him a tango. There you go. They pulled him two tangos. He didn't have any at the start. That a boy. Oh, the melee on melee matchup. That's rare. In the mid lane, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are sword duelers here. Oh, easy. Well, who level has the better matchup? Flame Guard certainly does work, but you got Dragon's Blood on the side of the Dragon Knight. I would say it's pretty even. Uh, I think Dragon Knight has the more spammable spell, but Smash has higher base damage. So it's, you know. I would anticipate, though, we're probably not going to see a lot of action in this mid lane unless something goes horribly wrong and one of them well, Smash has, gets picked I out. I think Smash has kill potential on Dragon Knight, but Dragon Knight like, does not have kill potential, at least not in a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see if that happens here. There is also possible kill potential in this top lane as Snaking does overextend. Yes, he may have Surge now, but one swift net, and uh, he could be in trouble here. So. I, don't, I don't even think they can kill him with a net. They have to like net him while he Surged in order to get a kill. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. Pull through happening on the bottom, whatever. Trying his best to keep the creep wave back. Obviously, uh, Mr. Strange, you know this is happening. Comes I, close. I like the Storm's build. He went for a uh, Soul Ring recipe first because when you're versus Darkseer, you need to have constantly have mana to try and deal with these Iron Shell creeps. Oh, Snaking. Snaking the King. Oh, he's level 2. Can they do it? Surge net. You said it would be hard, Merlini. I don't know if they'll be able to get him on this go, but they're certainly going to try. Got him. He's down. Van is going to be picking up your first blood on the Storm Spirit. Couldn't ask for a better it's first blood. It's supposed to be hard. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Snake King just goes a bit too deep. Very hungry to try to leech or maybe pull that big stack towards the lane. Either way, he's just a bit too far. Even with the surge out there at the end, it's not going to be enough to get away from that pesky net. The only re way you can do that is if you think Naga Siren isn't going to hit you with the net, which is, you know, probably unlikely at this level of play. Or she skills Riptide first, which she did not. So maybe he thought that he skilled Riptide. I think that's uh, probably one of the better explanations that I can go for because, like, Chilling Touch does a lot of damage. <laughs> like, you, you don't want to you don't want to walk into that spell. Nope. nope, nope, nope. Bottom lane, though, pushed very heavy towards the side of Sector V. Very nice for Strange here on his clockwork. So he's already up to level three. And he's been poking at some good CS. Sidesteps the LSA. He's up to six and one. Not too shabby. I mean, you compare that to the other side. Snake King, who even has the benefit of Ion Shell, still only two and oh in level two. Are we going to be seeing the Darks here go to the jungle at this point? Looks like it, but he's also walking yep. through a ward. So they know that no one's top at all. Oh, that, that's actually probably a good reason why too. To make gonna sure. see this, and I mean, maybe Masoko could even he head off elsewhere. Yeah. It, well, they're also doing this big stack. Do you see the stack that they have? Like, I mean, they're they're able to farm up a lot in the safe lane because of this. It's I would say better than having a lane ward, uh, just because once you kill him once, like he can't really come up. He has to to hide to get experience. But if you know he's in the jungle, or if you don't see him with that ward, you know he's hiding. And if you see him, obviously, he's over there too, oh, so your supports can do whatever. I agree. This is a great ward, but the thing is, is how often are you going to be able to get this ward down? They were blessed with the opportunity to smoke go bottom, and no one was there at all, so they're just like, ah, we'll just roll deep and... Well, is <laughs> that, I mean, that's, maybe way. that's why they did the smoke. They're like, okay, well, if we don't get a kill, we can get some deep wards in. That's true. So, Very true. And with this bit of extra vision, they'll have exactly uh, the know-how to see what Snaking's up to here. Still a continued bit of the same. They make their pull through happen. Strange is going to contest it. He's still going to get a bit on his clockwork here. Mid lane, they kind of go toe to toe. The CS matchup where you have your Dragonite at 9 and 6, Smash at 10 and 5. So relatively neck and neck. Nothing too crazy. Poor Man Shield, even the early pickup here for your Ember. But um, 
The bad thing for Void Boys is that like Darkseer is going to have a really hard time recovering because he's always going to be threatened to have a stack stolen by Ember and Storm because they're much bigger than him right now. He's level 2. He's freshly level 2. So zero, sorry, 6 out of 300 experience and you have a level 3, almost 4 Storm Spirit and a level 4 Ember. So if they see like a 3 stack, they just contest the Darkseer. Especially with that deep ward. It's like, okay, well, I have a level 3 Flame Guard. What are you going to yeah, do about it? You're right. Or I have Storm Spirit with you know, my remnant and overload procs and I can just take it all, all your stacks and be super rich and then Darkseer is just pretty much useless for the rest of the game because he's just gonna get picked on by clock without any items so like I, I like Sector V's game plan I mean yeah they, they step in they plan a great ward they move out with a smoke immediately we feel like they have the more favorable draft they clearly have eaten their Wheaties they're ready to play this game Void Boys come to this they are sporting a lot of stand-ins it's not their traditional roster they want to roll with here so you know this could be a, a bit of a momentum push already for the Sector V squad. And snaking gets mud golems. Oh boy. That was my best snaking right there. <laughs> 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 so he's gotta do he's gotta work with that. Maybe he can make the stacks on the side, but that takes away a bit. Dragonite's not gonna be venturing anywhere. He's just looking to hang tough and hope that maybe Smash gets frisky to go elsewhere and he can make a push onto the tier one tower, but I don't really foresee that happening whatsoever. But Sector V has to make good use of the information that Darkseer is in the jungle. Yeah. Like uh, Again, if they know they have stacks, they can contest it with Ember and Storm. If he's like slowly jungling, they need to get levels on their supports in response. So it's either one of those two choices that they have to make right now. Um, and also, does Storm want to push the tower? That's also something of concern. He can just use Sol Ring every creep wave and push out, push out the wave into the tower. Uh, I don't think he's going to get a Basilius because you don't see that often from safe lane storms, although you do see it on other safe lane heroes if they want to take the tower. Um, but I don't think that would actually be that bad for them either. All right. Looks like we're going to get back and underway here. Right on cue. Beautiful stuff. Van continues to farm up here on his Storm Spirit and getting ready to push to level 4. And as you pointed out, he's already going to go right for that Soul Ring buildup. We'll see if he adventures straight towards the Bloodstone or if an Orchid. Strange gets straight. stunned out on bottom. He gets lifted into a Light Strike Array into a Fissure and down he goes. Interesting. He's flying too he, close he wants to, to Yeah, he wants to come over and contest these pulls. You, and just by deduction and having this ward mid lane, you know that those supports are still going to be around. He's not respecting the Rubik, man. I'm telling you, Rubik is just incredibly good at initiating on the clockwork. And they also coordinated very well on that. They stunned before he was able to get off a cog block. Strange is back. He's got Tranquils now. And he's just going to try to pull the aggro as much as possible towards this tower. But whatever. He does not have mana for this lift to go around. And he's not going to be able to stop him a whole lot. So he gets the creep wave under the tower. He'll continue to farm up. It's good for him. Unfortunately, that they did have to hand it over. So one to one as we even this game out. I was going to say Orchid, but then again, Fly. He's probably going to be building, I'd assume, on his Lena into an early Yules. So could be a bit sticky on that front. Maybe that's where you consider a Bloodstone first and foremost for Van, who is eating way too many tower shots right now. We'll step back and salve up, it looks like. But look at this. Oh, because they know Darkseer is missing in action, they're just going to make a quick push on this tier one. They might be able to get it quick. That's a good move. I, like, you know, having free farm in your safe lane is nice and all, but Darkseer is getting free farm in the jungle. So the best way to counter this is is to get even more free farm, which is being able to farm the jungle, farm the tower, and farm aggressively closer to T2. So it's easier for you to rotate and backstab mid and to limit the farm. And again, I, I like this play a lot from Sector V. It's, it might not sound like that big of a deal, the decision to go for the tower, but it really opens up what you can do. And it is uh, not that important of a tower, but the gold influx is also really nice. Oh, and yeah. they can they can stack a lot for Naga Saren. You know, it, it's them all the way through. Even for your little supports, it means they can get that next set of wards. It means that they can secure boots for yourself, uh, you know, a wand even. Every little bit helps, and you get pushed that much further ahead than the opposing team supports. And yeah, but they're playing super greedily on top. Like, AA is level 4 around level f uh, final 5 minutes, and that's about the same that Aoi was last game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, they're, they're getting their oh, form mid lane off. push onto DK here. It forces out the rotation from Shanks, who's going to land out the Fissure. They can't follow through with it. And a simple salve is going to be popped up here to get him right back into rhythm. So, But this is good. You know, they're pressuring top. They're pressuring mid. Uh, Clockwork has to keep the supports occupied on bottom lane, and they're doing the jungle. So, uh, again, it's like the map is theirs. The map is theirs. They're getting Indeed. everything that they would want from top to bottom at this point, and it's going to be more pressure here on the Void Boys to try to 
pull it out. But when you really look at their lineup, uh, what is it going to be that, that they're going to be able to pull back with? Uh, Again, we see this, like, shaker that just hasn't been very useful. Like, he, he's trying to leech, but, like, his his time is limited because of the clockwork. Like, he's going to be super underfarmed and... You know, you have to question whether or not he's going to be able to get a blink at this point in the game because of all the ways that they can jump him. Like, they have such incredible catch from uh, Sector V. And even if he does get a blink dagger, they could just stop his, halt his Echo Slam with a uh, with a Naga Siren ultimate and then just re-engage on him. So I don't exactly uh, value the Earthshaker as much as a lot of these other teams have. And, I, I mean, if you're, like, a super badass Earthshaker and you can, like, fissure block mid constantly and let your mid snowball out of control, then that's a different story. But as far as what's been happening for Earthshakers, they've, just like, been, like, super leeching to the point where it's just not a useful pick. Does look like Void Boys do want to respond with a tower of their own. They're going to use their first Dragon Form here on the bottom lane. Trying to poke out as much damage as possible to get it down to half-life here and then have to step back. Smash and Mr. Fangay. Yep, he's, he's, in the, one in. he's in the ward vision, though. So I don't think they'll be able to get what they want done. And look at this rotation. DK heads back to mid lane with the remainder of his Dragon Knight form here. And he'll just go ahead and burst down the creeps. A bit all over the place, but Sector back on the move here, Molini. They I, smoke up in their head bottom. I think they saw the end. Uh, didn't he have an invis? Oh, I guess that was earlier. Well, they feel safe. Fly is doing a pool camp. They don't know it. Oh, they go up north here. They're going to turn the corner and see Mr. You know, Snake King. You know what? This He actually got boned by the, the mud golems. If, he, if there <laughs> weren't were mud golems, I think their smoke would have expired. Mud golems, man. That it took is, him a little too long. It, it, it really did. Oh, like, man. if it were satyrs, he, he would have killed it a long time ago. But it was mud golems, so he's there for, like, you know, a lot longer than he needs to be. And then he dies. Mud golems, secret sector V MVPs for the elite start of this one. <laughs> yeah. Going to help with that kill. Snake King goes down. He's level 6, though, so he's done okay. But look at Storm CS. 64. That is almost double the next highest. That's almost, yeah. Well, yeah, he's working with the jungle, but near perfect CS game for him so far. And he's just... Looking pretty stellar. It's going to be a Bloodstone. Got that point booster, yep. Van does play a pretty nice Storm, though. We've he plays a great We've Storm. A he plays a great Slark as well. But Slark isn't really the flavor now. But I've witnessed many a game from the old Not Today squad where Van Wha has pulled it back. Whether a Morph, a Slark, and now a Storm. Lift Why is lane. Lena's CS not similar to the Storms? That is my biggest question. Because she's 1-0. and zero. She, I mean, Clockwork can do something... Like, he, he can pull the creeps back, but he shouldn't be able to contest Lena's farm. And if it were, like, 50, I probably wouldn't comment on it, but it's, like, astoundingly low. It's lower than, let's, like, half what it should be. Maybe not half. Maybe, like, oh, God, he gets initiated on. He gets hook shot by strains on the bottom Whoa. lane. Ice Blast even coming in as a bit of a hate. It's also going to connect on the Rubik here. They step back, but Strange is like, let's re-engage here. I got Battery Salt going. Snake Kings here does have the wall. Not looking to pull it out quite yet. But that's the start of it, Merlini. You got your Ice Blast ready to go, Hook Shots ready to go, and Storm Spirit, we already know he's got the farm to be ready to play anytime. I think that this is when Sector V can really go out of control. Yeah, we talked about Lena like having a Yules, how that's a really good versus Ember Spirit, and how it can potentially counter the Storm Spirit, but like there, she's not getting a Yules anytime soon. She doesn't even have her Staff of Wizardry yet. I think she's just about to buy it. Here but. it is, mid lane, Ice Blast, Smash moves in, gets the chains, and that Dragon's Blood is not going to be happening. It's all clotted up, and now he's dead. Shanks comes in and could hand over another freebie. He goes down, double kill for Van. Smash eats up the Laguna and just shrugs it off and walks away. Oh, they turn it up already. Two and an O. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, mid lane jump. They're, they're converting their farm into kills, into map control, into presence around the map. They get both 10-minute runes. The tower down is down top. Like, Void Boys is probably pretty darn scared to farm their own jungle, which they should be. Staking's, like, running away. And this game is slowly but surely getting out of hand. And Void Boys... They, they have to do something fast. Like, ideally, your Lena would have Yules around this time and she can start getting solo picks to ease the pressure off the other lanes, but she's still struggling to farm, like, three of her four pieces. Masoku with a very deep foray into the enemy lines. Hashtag the king. In mid lane, smash, though. Not going to get caught out easy. Remnant away after the fissure. Snaking needs to kind of recuperate. And, but look, yeah. they're, they're just sitting five men mid, and they're, they're scared to death. 
it's clear that it's like we need to take towers. Let's use our DK, get yeah. them to take towers, and then we'll have money. And then if we money, I'll have Yules, right? That works, but it's not so easy. DK is not a one-man wrecking ball. He needs a support crew behind him. He needs like a you know, a, a pretty high level clock or, or a Rubik or like a really fast fingered Rubik that can lift after like a hook shot in. Um, but no one can really feel safe because of the storm spirit who almost has a bloodstone and like he can, he can kill any of these heroes. Like who can free farm against them? Uh oh, party on bottom. Strange moves in, gets a good hook shot connection on the snake king who's going to be forced to ion shell and wall drop here. Can he man up on this? He can, it looks like. Oh, right before the fissure comes out from Shanks, there's a song combo breaker from Mr. Fangay as he will TP away, and so will Strange. Whew, just in the nick of time. Yeah, they're not, they're not good at getting nothing. And Rubik dies mid lane. Ember Spirit just kind of walks past him, and his aura of handsomeness from Smash was even able to burn him apart. <laughs> Rubik goes down, makes it now 6 to 1. Beauty hurts. Okay, Van. Burn just so much. Is Fly going to show himself? I, is Fly visible with that ward? No, he's definitely not. But if he shows himself, he's going to get he's going to get nailed. Well, he's creeping in, but it looks like Sector V are already on the way out. But I don't think it's really for him to turn around, and they do. Hey, look at that! It's a Fly Laguna. They give him, and he goes. Is they're going to get help from whatever they are? They're going to get the lift pull back, and Fly going to try to get him down. They get it. Okay, good position there from whatever. Coax is in a jump from your storm spirit and he's gonna get punished they didn't even have the blast up if they had the blast up it would have been super easy but very nice fishing from the rubik right there baiting him out oh do they get the rune oh oh well, they got fly though and he's dead <laughs> oh man oh he thought he was catching a break right there and they know they have a war but they don't know where it is he de he tries to deal because they saw him coming they shot the aa blast before they even saw him so they knew he was on his way there so by that reason they have him as a reward but not where they think it Their is this, wards is, have this is actually the same place unique. that owie placed a ward last game it's super so. unique they got that ward there they have a nice little ward right at the cross point here near the ancient camp and we saw that first war of the game Behind the tier one, these guys oh, are. Oh, Smash up going crazy on the bottom lane. He's crazy dead here in a moment. Trying to walk through the wall. Big vacuum from Snake King will pull them back. But can they run out with their lives? Well, Strange can. He's going to get locked down from the fissure. Help Smash is able to make it away, however. Him and Mr. Kudai is able to make it out. Barely alive. Ice Blast to fly in. Does not quite connect, but Vance still wants to commit here on the DK who's going to dish out the stun fire blood. And they realize maybe we can get him. Iron Shell's doing good work, but wow. now they have to step back lots of damage. If that AA bots hit, two heroes it are dead. Been, yeah, easy snaps right there, but it's not going to be happening. Unfortunately, just right off the mark. Wow, Storm Spirit's Bloodstone got delayed a lot. He had the, he had, uh, the same items, I think, two and a half minutes ago? He was, like, close to just getting balling out of control, but now he's just slightly out of control. Middle they wanted that tier one. This oh. ice blast might connect. Uh, boom! It gets three on the back end. Snake King looks pretty nice. They want to go for him, but their hook is going to connect into whatever instead. It's an easy little Rubik grab if they want it, but no! They end up losing out the clockwork. Whatever will end up going down. It's a one for one trade, but obviously, again, not as profitable as Sector V had wanted there. They have mobility, but it just they couldn't get there quite quick enough. Maybe if Void Boys had kind of lingered around. Man, Smash is a player. He just goes right in for Snake King and will burn him down. And it will hand over his own life. Oh, the song came out again. But this time, it wasn't going to matter. He got burned down. He got burned hard. The, the DK is proving to be somewhat of a big issue because they can't actually kill him. And uh -oh. he's just there to stun whomever. And Nosoku just throwing out snowballs left, right, and center, man. Feels like it's only got a 20-second cooldown at this rate. Oh, is he going to let him steal? Oh, he's smart. He dropped an icy vortex close to the tower so he wouldn't steal the ult. Uh-oh, Fly is getting solo picked right here. Styling all over his van. Easily sidestep the LSA, and well, I don't even know if that stun would have hit, but he does ball lightning that anyways, and we will make it out. Good solo pick for him. Fly goes down, and the delay of the Yules continues. Oh, they might go for a kill in mid. They're going for a surge initiate, probably. Maybe, maybe. Oh, there's a oh, ward. Okay. There is a ward. And they get it. Take it down. And the opportunity might be gone now here for Void Boys. Nearby help and Strange, who does have a hook shot ready to go. This could just as easily be turned around. Vaughn is also showing up and bottling up. I was thinking he's peeking up the hill. And he shows himself here. I don't know. They're taking a bit too long. 
Sector V could throw something together here in time, but there's the surge charge, and he turns his tail around and Ooh. not going to find the target. They're about to get, like, blown up by Clockwork plus AA. Like, this is a really dangerous position. I don't he's, like, running back. He's like, I'm going back for the long oh, wait, one. Oh, wait, they smoked. Strange. Oh, Strange. He's, he's hustling back. The smoke oh, will break. He's trying to retreat away. And what great positioning there. by him. Oh, my goodness. That's a game saver right there. Cog stolen. Unless he gets initiated on again. No. That was that was really good by him. Oh, uh oh, there's that ice blast, and there it goes. Wait, where the went right through him, but the blast goes way behind him. Smash is gonna be a bit of trouble here. Gets the sleight of fist off, gets the chains, but will go down. Fisher's gonna be connecting there from Shanks. That will get the kill. What was the actual blast? Though? I saw. I, I was afraid if I followed it, I wouldn't see the fight, so I just let it go. But it definitely landed at least what felt like a hundred yards behind where the actual fight was taking place. They needed a hook shot. Smashy's going in and dying because he thinks he has support. Well, maybe that's why all the embers get treads instead of bots. He needs more HP. I feel like he needs drums. I always heard that bots was the way, though. I guess a lot of it people is really like if to you utilize don't die. It, but yeah, you're right. But he, like the Naga sign was a little bit too late on the bottom lane. He got chain stunned with Ion Shell on him. Uh, he didn't get any help in the middle lane. Like it's 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 great if you're constantly fighting and dying occasionally. But he's dying a little bit too much for I think to be worthwhile. Oh, and he's not spending his gold too. If he's spending his gold, it's fine. But oh, here he goes. Kills on sinking. Nope. Nope. Thinking we'll be able to waltz away. They continue to pressure mid lane, though they did grab that tier one tower after the fight had fizzled out. Just their first tower for Void Boys, so I'm sure they would love to. Immediate smoke off the back up at the Yules, but yeah. I think they caught it with that Observer Ward that just died. Oh, well, they are going to get the Yules regardless onto Clockwork here. He does decide to hookshot forward. This Ice Blast should connect. Laguna going to be there. He's still holding tough right now. Stolen Cogs and other Cogs going to be mating together here, but the Rubik is going to be dropped, and there is Smash. He's going to get connection. Uh, how fly. did he survive that? How does he have so much HP? Oh, he's a machine. Just 12, 50 HP. He is a machine. Bracer. That bracer. bracer. Dude, he was at 12 HP. Like, he needed every little stat point he could get right there. Value Bracer, man. And well, uh, top lane, Fissure onto Van, sneaking. sneaking the king. Can't do anything, but take a knee. Waiting for AA Blast. It's up in five. Where is he? He's like the quarterback this game. <laughs> like, I'm going. Isn't he the center? Full deep. Well, I, I say quarterback because he throws the ball, Merlini. Oh, I thought you were cause, saying because he calls the plays or starts Sports off the ball. fight. I guess it makes sense. Now, a center would be like Axe because he dunks. That's football, though. Oh, but oh, that's basketball. The, the person who snaps the ball. That's, uh, yeah, the center. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So the quarterback is the other team to catch it? The quarterback is the guy who follows up after the center makes a play. Oh, okay. Intercepted, but the follow-up's there. He snaps the ball. He gives. <laughs> he passes the ball to Van, and Van, you know. We're taking this a bit far. Yeah, yeah, this uh, trying is, to mesh Dota with real sports just is not happening. <laughs> But here we go. It's still 12 to 6. A big, fruitful start right now for Sector V. And it does look like Masoku is going to go down the path of Midas. So that means he can rush his Ags. That means the Ice Blast turns into a real pain in the ass as the game does go on because he'll get a boost of okay, XP. Okay, it's up again. Midas. Let's see where it goes. They're going for a four man gank on Smash. And Smash actually pops the smoke while renating out. That is. Doesn't seem to deter anyone. That is awesome. I don't know. Oh, they go for the AA blast on top, sneaking the king. Uh, smash the seal later, but that's not going to be enough to finish off Snake. Ooh, I fine. think he thought that the Lino was coming. The Lino, like, they can't. I, I, yeah, I think if they dumped everything, they could have killed him. Well, they're back at mid lane now. They're going to go for this tier one tower. Should be easy peasy. A uh, hook shot. Going to be a swing and a miss right there for the DK. Oh, DK has a blink. That's really bad for Smash. They don't have any protection for him. Oh, he's going with the glass cannon build. Bots into Battle Fury. No, no drums. Yeah. Looks like the, the drums might come from Clockwork instead, but I agree. This does make him a bit more frail, and that's kind of risky. You're going against a Laguna Lena. You're going against an Echo Slam. It's more of the Blink Dragon Sun. The Dragon yeah. Dragon Eye Sun has been destroying him. You know, yeah, if he leads off with a big Dragon Sun, there's going to be no Flame Guard, no way to get out. Plenty of Lockdown to follow up. Could be a bit scary here. They better keep up those strong wards so they don't see that uh, coming a bit too late. Van is not going to be getting that rune. We'll see DK snag it up. As Got the slide of fist. The Easy slight. <laughs> Smash will head back. <laughs> that looks ridiculous. What? <laughs> the Rubik using slight. 
Very, not very useful. Is there really much that's useful though from uh, maybe chains after a flame guard? I think it's really good. Lift? Yeah, flame guard null stacking together. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll never ever get hurt from magic damage. Uh oh. It actually connects, flies right through whatever, and snaking. Whatever's like, I'm going to go in. No, I'm not. I'm going to pull right back. Follow-up's not going to be there, plus a fissure in the way. Smash will not be caught out. Meanwhile, back at mid lane, Misoku, the sole AA, is happy to kind of get a few pot shots on that tier 1 tower with Strange waiting back in behind. Just a little pressure coming out from all fronts here, Merlini. Nothing too exciting, but it looks like maybe that will change. Void Boys rotating now to the bottom. There's that blink. A Yule's going to be set up. Stun is going to be there in time. Smash will go down. And there it is, and the Flame Guard will be stolen. Where was his slight... That's the strength of Ember Spirit. You gotta slight after the Yules so that you don't die. Oh, big vacuum into the wall here, but the song, the song. Radiance Not gonna allow a follow up, an easy eject button out from trouble. And all the meanwhile, Van continues to farm up Radiance towards his Orchid now. Almost getting it complete here. Now has it. Holy moly, that is a 22 minute Orchid and Bloodstone set here for Van. He has to be careful with the sleep TPs. It actually can get interrupted by the fissure from uh, Earthshaker. So, if you hit, if you use the very end of the fissure, but Sector V not really connecting on that many kills. Still, Storm is the big, big, super farmed villain of this game. 1600 HP with Yule, or sorry, with Orchid and Bloodstone. Oh my goodness. He's a big boy. Without question. I, I mean, they have not even really utilized much of that clockwork AA combo yet. Oh my god, he's jumping okay. Goes all the way for this side camp for now. Clockworks, I think, mixed, missed a couple hook shots. He missed that one in mid on the DK. Mm -hmm. Okay, smoke from Void Boys. They're not looking to hold back and wait. And allow Sector V to continue to farm up and just kind of. Okay, he has a remnant out. Like, oh, you just gotta re just gotta use a slight after you get Yules. We'll see. Right now, it's just innocent side farm here. And a Snake King showing himself. Maybe they're hoping that Snake King will bait something out, but that's not going to be the case. Smash is already on his way. Continues to farm. Oh, is he going to do a blind stun? Or is he going to try Yules? Oh, is he just behind? They're going to keep. Are they going to keep following? Wow, Rocket's what? Gonna be there. What a rocket! Oh, it was just hitting a creep wave. I thought he actually was looking for the Lena. I was like, dude, that's so next level. <laughs> well, it does fly overhead, and that means they're just going to move it instead right into a tower push using the dragon form. Bottom lane is going to be split pressure coming in as Van's poking at his own. He's going to go right for Snake King. Sees him, jumps in, says, I have an Orchid, and is going to try to finish him off in time. Riptide's going to be there, but Snake King, happy to shrug it all up. He's got a Glimmer Cape and a mech, which is not even used, so he's deceptively tanky, if you will. Now there's going to be Yules on the fly. Plenty of follow-up coming out. Can they finish off Van in time here? No Laguna to be used just yet. They get the nice lift. Plenty of lockdown here, and they get him off. No Laguna even necessary for that one. And now they want to get a hold of Mr. Fangay here. There goes DK leading out the front, but boom! Here comes the hook shot from Strange. It's going to lead into a Masoko Ice Blast, and the DK will be the one to crumble here. He's holding on barely. Cold Feet keeps him in place. How the hell is he still alive? There he goes. And they get the slide of his kill. It looks like it's going to be a two for one now. They're looking for whatever. Whatever drops his own stolen cogs. Gets off the fade bolt trying to retreat. But no! Going to get snipped right there from Smash. And that means it's going to be a two for two trade all day. Chaos breaks out. It takes a while for Sector V and their troops to show up. But they are here and they are ready to play. is level 11. That's a big deal. They've been lacking a lot of counter engage because like the sorcerer he got Yules into a Lena stun into a uh, Rubik telekinesis into a DK stun that's like s seven seconds of lockdown that you really can't get out of yourself like you have to be able to dodge the Yules which is next to possible so the counterplay to that is to be able to summon a siren and then just re-engage with like an AA blast or like a cog or something like that so they, they were doing that but it just was once every three minutes now it's once every two minutes Things are continuing to prove to be a bit difficult here for Void Boys. Sorcerer is getting BKB. I think that's the right choice here. Oh, yeah. You can see already just the amount of lockdown that follows one after the other once they catch that one Yules. Oh, Yules. Into yeah. an LSA, into a freaking lift, into a DK stun. Alternatively, they could have gotten a Glimmer Cape. Whoa, that's... Oh, a big jump. Big Ice Blast. 
A Yules for now on the fly, but no, oh, they get a big turn on the van. They annihilate him with both an Echo and a Laguna. Fly's going to get the help of the Glimmer Cape, so the Ice Blast is not going to be enough to bring him down. Smashies, whatever, come in, but whatever, only stolen. The Powerball is going to be able to jump away from trouble. That's a oh, good counter fight there from Void Boys. That's cost him a lot, and ooh, almost got smashed there. With Storm the was stun. super farm. He's died three times, I think, in a row. Down to three charges on his Bloodstone. Yeah, that's, that's not the play. Oh, they get a nice Yule Catch, though, under your Naga. And that is the wow. death of her. So, okay, what they need to do is, A, either farm BKBs or wait for Naga to be there. And then, secondly, they need to, like, stall when BB is trying to run around as five. Like, if you know they're running around as five, all you do is just split push and try and get some good wars up. So they have the good wars up. All they need to do is split push. Oh, oh. So. Bomb lane. Could not get him with the pull. Missed. Just see out of the corner of your eye, like a mini-map icon, go whoosh, I'm like, what the hell's happening here? Committed long jump on the fly is not going to be happening. But it's enough to get him out from the lane and van back into farming mode. And then there were three bloodstone charges left. Yep. I don't know. Maybe that gets into his head now. Doesn't want to make those kind of big, ambitious jumps, knowing that he could just be jumping into a bit of a trap here. Void Boys have been doing a nice job just kind of beating behind each other's backs. So when the jump is there, there's help not too far out. We didn't see a lot of that from last, but it seems to be working out so far for Void Boys. But it's still Sector V who seemed to be claiming the majority of the farm. Smash is pushing out the top, and we know that he has a huge ceiling of potential to take in the late game. Well, now they're actually going for two BKBs. Hmm. That's interesting. It's just so much stun, so much lockdown on Void Boys. I mean, can you really blame them? Rubik, Earthshaker, DK I mean, Stun, Lena. You can use Song of Siren. You can also get a Lotus Orb. Lotus Orb, really yeah. To. I knew you were gonna. You can also get a one. Glimmer Cape, which I think like is a pretty viable option uh, to Ancient Apparitions Midas. Like Glimmer Capes around the same price, yeah. and it would. It, I mean, Lena does not have a scepter, so sh you can you can like save people completely with that. Like what physical damage do they have? DK went for Blink, so he has no damage. He's going for BKB as well, so he really has no damage. I agree. I mean, I think Glimmer could have been a good candidate for someone like Naga. AA typically wants to be far, though, for the Ice Blast, so being close for a Glimmer yeah, a bit I, sticky. Maybe for the Naga Siren. I mean, the mech hasn't really... I mean, I, this is just gonna... I think so. But the Medallion even hasn't been that useful. Mm. I think the I think a Glimmer would have worked wonders for the way that they're playing right now. But if they're not going to get Glimmers, they might as well get BKBs. With BKB does come a bit more life, a touch more damage here and there, whatever, so they'll be fine. Void Boys on the Prowl once more. Yeah, but ideally you don't want to get it. You want to get, like, damage items. Oh, yeah, of course. You don't want to have to get a BKB. They, they could have won easily, though, I think, with a Glimmer Cape. Like, they just go win with Ember or Storm with these glass cannon builds and just do so much damage and get saved by Glimmers. That would have that would have been ownage. Yeah. It feels like, though, they just kind of want to get what they feel is necessary on the heroes. I mean, it's kind of hard not to well, you know, pass up. If you get a Midas, it's like, I got to get nags on an AA. That just seems sweet. And Naga's like, well, I got this mech. And now Arcane's. Guardian 3 seems pretty Smash. swell. Smash. Oh, get that echoed. Okay, gets Ket. Big echo. Fissure follow up. And there's the lockdown. See, lock this down. is the problem with BKB. Like, even if he had BKB there, he wouldn't have lived. He needs people to sit behind him. And they've actually been doing a really poor job of doing that. As opposed to Void Boys, who's been doing a really good job of doing that. Yes. And now they even pick up a gem. They're that confident. They're like 7,500 gold behind, yet they still pick up a gem because they know that the way that they're playing is just simply outplaying Sector V's playstyle right now. Maybe Sector V just got a bit overconfident with the early start to their game. I mean, it was going splendidly. I feel like at one point it was like, what, 7-1? to one? And then we saw Storm just make these pretty big ambitious jumps. Of course, it was coming with the follow-up of an Ice Blast that here and there has been a bit off the mark. Clockwork, yeah, a bit here and there off the mark with his hook shot. So they haven't really been able oh, to... Oh, you know who it is. Plan. It's actually the Clockwork that's been really quiet. The Clockwork should be involved in a lot more kills. Like, he should be the one that's tanking the DK stun or in like the LSA and like the Rubik lift and all these spells that have been locking down to other teammates. Like if he goes in first and other people follow up, there's so little chance that they're going to die because they're going to immediately be trying to save the person that Clockwork hookshots on. So he's, he's actually been uh, pretty much too quiet, I would say. To the credit though of Void Boys, they have been sticking together a lot. You I mean, you see this trifecta even moving from mid to top. Occasionally, you'll see something like a snaking a bit out too far. We saw fly bottom lane almost get caught out, but was not grabbed. But for the most, maybe Clockwork just hasn't been, you know, graced with that opportunity to get a big hook shot catch without running into too much trouble.
maybe being a bit too hesitant. But I agree. It's been a bit quiet. So, got to find your voice there, buddy. Really step it up. We'll have to see. Maybe a bit of an anticipation now circling around the Roche pit here. There's already a big stack built up for these supports to farm up, it looks like. But it is Van who actually already goes into the pit, and Sector B will get it started. So now we see BKBs already come out on the side of Sector V. We have the BKB up on the Sword Spirit. Ember Spirit is, let's see, does he have a second item yet? He has a recipe, so I don't know who's going to get the Aegis. Like, Storm's so much scarier, but he has, he has BKB. I would say still give it to Storm. And then if Ember Spirit dies, that's usually his fault or Naga's fault. He's going in for it. And Ice Blad's going out bottom here. Good catch, Snay. Will. Uh, it's strange. Uh, okay, I was going to say. You're not doing it. Okay, another gem pickup by Naga Siren. This is good, too. So we got gems on each side already. Mm -hmm. All right. So time to take control of this map. I want to see who looks to do it first. I'd still have to say that Sector V do have a bit more in their arsenal. Well, now they, can just, but now they can just uh, ulti, like, Stormball on people with BKB, and there's, like, no counterplay. I guess they have Glimmer, but he has a gem, so... Yep. All right, well, here comes Void Boys crowding around this mid lane here. Ooh, a nice little Invis rune. Gonna be snagged up here. And a bounty. Double rune. <laughs> yeah. DK's gonna grab that one as well. Oh, do they know he has a gem? I don't actually know. They're going up this hill. Oh, Masoka's in trouble. He is doing a stack. His back is turned. Yeah, but they're, I mean, okay. They can all come. Could help. And there it is. Quick song. And the second Snake King blinks in, so he blinks into the song. Van's going for the backliner, and Shanks looking to take him out at the end of the song. Doesn't get it quite in time. Now Smash shows up, jumps in. The stolen song is going to get silenced immediately because of those BKBs. They're able to rip apart the Rubik, and now they're looking to clean up more here. Smash looking to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with DK. DK turning attention, gets the sub to under the clockwork. Big vacuum from Snake King with the wall, but it might be too late. He gets annihilated. And the rest of Sector V are going to just clean out the rest. Fly barely able to etch it away he goes down and along the bottom it's just top to bottom here shanks actually made it out he was the first one he could jump on but the other four they They're all crumble super lucky they didn't lose a gem there but i mean that's pretty much what they needed to go along the whole time it's like okay somebody gets jumped song of the siren turn it around but at the same time they had bkb so that fight was like so much safer than all the other ones with that big fight, Sector V just charged down this mid lane. Do they dare go for high ground? It looks like they do. They Definitely. got the Aegis because why not? They start moving in. BKB is still going to be on cooldown here for Van and Smash. But it doesn't matter. DK Having out just... for 30 seconds. Yeah, They know there's no wall on Darkseer. Lena still has Laguna. They're spread out for Echo. Look at their positioning. Like They can't get a two-man Echo with this positioning. Shanks is not even looking for it. He's staying back in the fountain. It looks like they might have to just kind of hand over this first set of racks here. Okay, now they gotta start watching out for Echo Slam. All the heroes are respawning right now. That's the, that's a big play that they can make right now. A Ice Blast is timing it the second they come back maybe and want to walk out from the fountain. We'll connect on the Shanks. He gets bumped back, hit with the cogs so he can't blink in. The opportunity might be gone at this point, but they still want to stand and fight here. Van looks moving, gets a pullback onto Snake King. Snake King in a bit of trouble. Remember, he does not have the wall yet, so he's looking to retreat and run, pops his mech, but they are going to be able to bring down whatever. The Rubik will be dropped. And now Sector V look to double back, hoping to kind of take down the secondary racks here, but it's not there yet. Nice big fissure. We'll connect on the Smash. Can they lock him down enough? No! See you later! Smash just heads and remnants right back out from the base. He will drop a new remnant down, go back to the fountain, return, and try to finish what he had once started. In the meantime, Snake King and company. Oh, here it comes! Boom! Big Ice Blast! That is going to do so much work. Snake King is going to be soon to crumble here. Fly, thankfully, not connected with that one, but DK is left behind. He will go down. It's a double kill for Strange on the clockwork, and that will be game number one. It will go to Sector V. Void Boys gets dropped, and we are going to be going into a game number two. Not a bad game from Void Boys. They, didn't, they really like damage. For some reason, Lena's farm was really low. Um, Snake King also died once really early, which was pretty detrimental because he was only level two and he can't really return to the land at that point so uh i think if those two things had gone better for them then uh maybe they could have won also tk was surprisingly underformed he was zero and four he had pretty low gpm so i, I don't know i don't know what i mean they were five meaning from like 10 minute onwards but still they were exceedingly broke i mean will we chalk this up that maybe it just wasn't the best draft that void boys could throw together i mean oh yeah they didn't like get a lot so that i don't feel like they could have done a lot with it yeah so and we already knew what we were going to be expecting out of sector v with their very mo high mobility quick pickoff action lineup it seemed a bit finicky there for a while but once they secured the roche they got that big team fight mid oh god aa had a scepter at the end and it took it over Oof. yeah 